Yo, what's pumping people? So today I'm going to be going over my review of my six month ectosterone cycle. It's not really a full complete cycle as I'll explain later on, but I am going to be going over everything I was taking, when I was taking it, and what I was doing throughout this time because some of the things that were going on during this time are kind of relevant to everything that was going on. I'm going to start by giving a little bit of background on what was happening on July, in July and August. In July, I was training about six times per week. I was doing push-pull legs, push-pull legs, um, every single week with an occasional rest day, sometimes not even a rest day. Um, I believe I have in my in my uh, gym app, it says that I went, I think 26 days out of the month, something like that, I'd have to double check. But in July, I went to the gym almost every single day, push, pull, legs, and then in August, I was doing the exact same thing, but I was also doing cardio every single day. Um, 35 minutes of incline treadmill at 3.7 miles per hour to burn about 400 calories per day, I believe. 400 to 500 calories, something along those lines. This will be relevant later. Right now, I'll focus on September. September was when I started taking Muscle Empire Beta Ectosterone. And during this time, I was taking, uh, I was eating about 1900 calories per day. This is very much relevant because as I mentioned in my initial post, I used to be eating way too little calories. So in July and August, I tried to increase my calories to 1900 while doing cardio. And I just mentioned 400 to 500 calories. So my calorie increase wasn't that great. Uh, but in September, I was now doing 1900 calories per day. The first time I started taking Muscle Empire Beta Ectosterone was Labor Day. So September 6th was the first day that I started taking this Ectosterone. And within a week, I went from squatting two plates to two plates and 25. And this is gonna be a very much recurring theme where I am not sure what part of this is the Ectosterone and what part of it is just my natural potential as I started increasing my calorie intake because I had, um, you know, as I mentioned before, I was eating way too little. So now that I was eating more calories, I probably just had more energy in my system. So now that I was consuming 1900 calories per day, do we know for sure that it was an exosterone? We'll kind of get into that. But I went from squatting two plates to two plates and 25s. And this is very much relevant because on one specific day that um, all the machines were taken, I decided to just jump on the leg press. Now, at my gym, two plates and 25s is about 250 pounds. On the leg press machine, I was able to do, I believe it was 320 or 350 pounds on the leg press. It wasn't too difficult, I was progressing well, but long story short, this resulted in a leg injury on the IT band. Um, it was five months in the process. But basically, I had a minor tear in my groin, and I had a minor tear in my IT band, which, you know, this injury happened on September 12th, and today is February 28th, and my leg is still not fully healed, and I only recently, and I mean like two weeks ago, started being able to train my legs again, and I'm still not able to fully walk like I used to. This is very relevant because during this time that I was taking Muscle Empire Beta Ectosterone, I was no longer able to train legs, I was no longer able to do cardio, and subsequently I had to go to the gym a lot less. Where before I was going six days a week, sometimes even seven days per week, I was now going three or four times per week because I didn't have that leg day in between and I still wanted to give myself plenty of recovery between my push and pull sessions. However, the most interesting part about this is despite the fact that me having increased my calorie intake to 1900 calories, um, not, not doing cardio, not training my legs, and going to the gym less often, I was maintaining my weight. But the most impressive part about that was not only that I was maintaining, I was getting leaner. Um, I was losing about one pound per week when I started my, my ectosterone cycle, I was 175 or 176, and by the end, I was 171 pounds. You know, so I dropped four pounds, five pounds, one pound per week, despite the fact that uh, calorie intake stayed the same, but my calorie expenditure must have definitely lowered since I was doing less activity per week. And I was somehow getting leaner, and at first I was concerned that I was losing muscle mass. You know, now that I was training less, I must be losing muscle mass. And while that might be true, at least in my legs, 
my upper body, my physique was getting leaner. I noticed that my, my stomach was getting more toned, my shoulders were getting bigger, my arms were getting bigger. And I actually had a lot more vascularity in the gym. So even though I was going down in weight, I looked leaner and more muscular with definition. So something was definitely going right with Muscle Empire Beta Ectosterone. But of course, then I switched over to Huge Supplements Ectosterone. And when I started taking this, um, I was doing two plates on bench press for three reps at the beginning of me taking my Muscle Empire Beta Ectosterone. And at the end of it, when I started taking this, I was doing two plates for five reps. So my reps increased by two, which is pretty good. At least I thought so considering I had been stagnant for so long. During the time that I took Huge Supplements Beta Ectosterone, I was taking two capsules per day and during the third week, I hit what I would call my peak physique. And that is because I was at some point losing about 0.2 pounds per day. And I got to the leanest I had ever been in my life. It was the first time I ever got under 170 pounds. You know, the lowest I went down to was 168.6 pounds. And I was, my I looked my absolute best. You know, I was very lean. I was very muscular. You know, I looked what... I would say, I don't know how to say it, but I, I guess it looked kind of unnatural. I guess you could say with a pump, with a pump, of course. It was really impressive. And on this third week and why I consider my peak physique is when I hit my absolute max on bench, I hit it. I hit two plates for seven reps. I thought that was even more impressive because I didn't have a spotter that day. And I actually felt like I could have hit it for more reps. Um, I just wasn't 100% certain because that 7th rep was a little bit shaky, probably could have gotten that 8th rep, but I didn't chance it because I didn't have a spotter. This is a very important milestone because while I was taking these two, two capsules of huge supplements, ectosterone, I was at my peak, but the week after that, when I was expecting to improve, I took it up to 3 capsules per day, and for some reason, I saw no added improvement. Maybe it was too soon that I shouldn't have expected an improvement, but I definitely wasn't expecting a detriment. I actually went down to, I believe, two plates for four reps on my first attempt, and then the second attempt, I hit it for five reps. So I was back to where I started when I first started taking huge supplements at Desterone, and I wasn't sure why. In November, I actually decided to completely stop taking ectosterone because I had a, a elbow and wrist injury. Well, not an injury, but it was starting to really bother me, and I wanted to play it safe. So I stopped trying to go for a PR every single week and I stopped taking ectosterone altogether for that week. And it was mostly because I wanted to see how much of, this imp of these improvements in my body are because of the ectosterone or how much of it is just because of my natural increased caloric intake. Because while I was taking huge supplements ectosterone, I was now taking in 2100 calories per day. Um, so again, it's kind of questionable. Was my increase in strength? because of the epistarone or because of my increased calorie intake. And considering that when I was taking two capsules per day, I hit my peak physique. And when I was taking three capsules, I wasn't really as good as I was in my third week, but during the fourth week, it really made me question the viability of epistarone. So I really had to test it by giving myself one full month of having no epistarone before, of course, starting to take intelligent elephant ectosterone and this is where i would argue things got the most interesting because in december i ramped my calories up to i believe 2200 calories per day and i was taking two capsules per day now of course this is complex differently than this one or at least supposedly it is you know because this is a uh, I don't know if it's chemically or molecularly binded to the compound, whereas this one is just put in a vat. Um, I believe that's why Derek from More Place for Dates has said that uh, they're complex differently from competitors. <clears throat> don't know for sure. They both have the exact same ingredients in them. Supposedly, they're just chemically binded differently. I was taking two capsules of Intelligent Elephant Ectosterone per day during December when I had an, um, when I had an approximate calorie intake of 2,200 calories per day and of course it was Christmas time, so there were days where I would have fluctuations in my calorie intake, and I at no point saw any added benefit. The most I was able to hit at one point was two plates for six reps. 
And this really started making me question the viability even more because this ectosterone was supposed to be the strongest version, the strongest bioavailable version of ectosterone in the market. And for some reason, I still wasn't seeing any benefit. This was really concerning and I honestly want to stop taking them all together, but I thought, you know what? I originally planned out to take three capsules of this ectosterone, so I did that. In January, I increased my calories to 2300 and I started taking three capsules per day. And it is very important to state that around this time, I was maintaining 171 to 172 pounds consistently throughout December and January, even despite in December I had higher calorie fluctuations. And again, I saw no benefit. During January, when I was now taking 2300 calories per day, I once again did not see any benefit while taking three capsules per day. And at this point, I was almost certain I am likely a non-responder. I didn't know this for sure, but I wanted to find out. So come February, I actually remove ectosterone once again from my regimen. <laughs> I'm just trying to jump off the bed. <clears throat> During this time, I was now taking 2,400 calories per day with absolutely no ectosterone. I also implemented the vertical diet and I dramatically increased my carb intake. This was very concerning and very alarming for me because I was changing several variables. Not only was my calorie intake higher now, but my protein intake was drastically reduced and so was my carb intake. Well, my carb intake was drastically increased. You know, on average, I was consuming about 200 to 250 grams of protein per day without even meaning to, whereas my carbs were about 180 grams per day, somewhere around those lines. I'd have to double check. And I had to reduce my, my protein intake to about 170 to 200 grams per day, uh, 170 to 200 grams per day. And I had to increase my carbs to 280 to 320 grams per day. And I thought this was gonna result in a lot of bloating, um, you know, due to, to, um, to the carb intake and the water retention. But for the most part, in February, I still maintained myself anywhere from 172 to 174 pounds. I am not 100% sure if it is partially because of the ectosterone, why I ended up getting a little bit of this weight, or if it was just because of my increase in calories on top of the, the, the calorie content that I was taking because I was no longer intaking as much protein. I was now uh, consuming a lot more carbs. I don't know, but yesterday I actually decided to, to replicate to the best of my ability my peak physique during my third week of huge supplements ectosterone. And it was the first time that I was actually able to exceed that previous um, milestone. And this was very important because in January and February, when I had taken a rest for my elbow and my wrist in November, actually ended up becoming a lot more noticeable and concerning issue in January and February. So I had to lay off the, the, the heavy weights substantially, you know, they got to a point where I was no longer lifting two plates. I was only lifting about a plate and 15s just for reps, just to play it safe on my elbow. But yesterday, after being cleared for my for my for my elbow, I got an X-ray done. Said everything was fine. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna tr attempt to attempt a new PR on bench press, and sure enough, I was able to do that for the first time in about four months. I was able to do two plates for eight reps, and um, I try to replicate to the best of my ability my same physique, and I feel like I was very similar. You know, I showed my girlfriend two pictures, and she could not tell the difference between the two pictures other than the fact that in one of them, I was more leaner, vascular, and muscular, and in the other one, I still looked like I had sizable improvements. The difference was about four pounds because in October, when I had first taken that picture, I was 168.6, whereas in this other picture, I was about 172.8. So there was a bit of a difference in weight discrepancy but overall, I looked the same, and my physique had now uh, superseded what I was doing um, in terms of strength on while I was taking ectosterone. All this to say that um, I did enjoy taking um, all these ectosterones, actually. During all of them, I would say that I, I, I reaped some sort of benefit. 
whether it was placebo or not, I did see increased muscle mass. I did see um, more vascularity. I had a leaner physique. And what I planned to do from the very beginning when I started taking exosterum was I wanted to be able to increase my caloric intake without getting fat. And you know, I am proud to say that in January, I was taking 2,300 calories. And in February, I was taking a little bit upwards of 2,400 calories. You know, it was anywhere from 2,430 to 2,460 calories. And my physique is still comparable and I'm still at one of my lowest weights I've ever been. And I can confidently say, I'm actually really happy with my current physique, which is something that I've struggled with for about six years now. Um, do I want to be leaner? Yes, absolutely. But at the same time, I'm okay with where I'm at right now, which leads me into my upcoming goals. In March, I'm going to be implementing creatine. Um, and I'm going to be starting my, my leg training now that, now that my leg has been cleared after five and a half months. You know, I'm going to see what sort of differences I can make. Um, I'm, I'm going to maintain my calories at 2400 per for now just because I have gained a little bit of weight and I'm happy with my current physique so I don't want to gain too much more weight. I'm going to maintain them at 2400 until hopefully April where hopefully my leg will be healed enough that I can start doing cardio and I'll be able to ramp up my calorie intake and supplementing that with cardio. And then of course in May is when I plan on taking Tercasterone. Um, I plan on taking uh, Tercasterone during May, June, and July, you know, leading up to summer because of course we want to look diced in summer. You know, I want to have abs for the first time in my life during summer. And I want to look good and I want to not be starving when I'm doing that. So I do have quite a bit more progress to make. I am going to keep experimenting with ectosteroids. I'm pretty much done with ectosterone. Um, I still have a few capsules, uh, a few bottles left, so I might later on mix the two, even though I'm pretty confident that I am a non-responder. But maybe I'll have some sort of different reaction by mixing tercasterone and ectosterone. But yeah, for now, I'm going to take one month off. I'm going to take one month of uh, creatine, and you know, it's supposed to take 28 days to absorb, so then April will be the month that I actually test how much of an improvement I see. So I'm basically giving myself two months until I start taking tercasterone, and I will take tercasterone for two to three months, depending on how I'm feeling, leading up to summer. The only thing is now I'm debating if what I'm going to be taking will be Gorilla Mines tercasterone, because it's supposed to be the most potent bio bioavailable version of tercasterone on the market, or if I should start by taking Greg Doucette's HTLT tercasterone. I'm not sure yet, but I'd love to hear what you guys think, what you guys want me to try out. Leave your comments down below, and I'll be happy to, to try whichever one you guys want to do first. I will be taking tercasterone during May, June, and July, so whatever way you guys want me to do that, I'd be happy to. The way I planned it was, um, well, the way I was thinking was in May, I would take HTLT tercasterone. In June, I would be taking four capsules of Gorilla Mind Tercasterone, and then in July, I would take six capsules, depending on how the results go for June. I'm only taking four capsules. But yeah, guys, just absolutely let me know what you guys think, what you guys want me to do. Just put your comments down below, and I will be sure to try it out. I will catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.